26 common survival myths that are way more hazardous than helpful. Getting abandoned in the Badlands for an unknown person is no less than a nightmare. Though, there are many people out there who are optimistic about the survival tips they have had either by someone's experience or from watching TV shows. However, the truth is that Mother Nature may not always be generous. Most of the tips people hear are usually myths of survival. Giving you these 26 survival tips means that you are in for an adventure. You could be dipped in hot water or even may be killed. You could be Bear grills. But no matter what happens, you really are in for a thriller. Be sure to subscribe to Did You Know and hit the bell so you never miss an upload from us. Also, leave a like right now. Here we go then. 1. Survival in snow can become a tough deal, especially when you run out of water to drink. You may be considering options such as drinking reindeer blood or even your own pee. However, eating snow would be a much better option, but the problem that lies with eating snow is that it's unbearably cold. Eating enough of it for quenching your thirst could cause problems. Your body temperature could be hitting a dangerously low level. It would be much better to boil the ice and use it for drinking. We are not done yet, as this is not the only survival myth that you need to avoid. Two. You must have heard of the story, Two Friends and the Bear, take that just as a story. When you are face to face, just go save your life. Do not play laying dead games with it. Especially the brown or grizzly bears are more likely to kill you as they might take you as a harm for their children. And if we talk about a big black bear, you will need to battle hard for life. 3. Make a shelter with its side leaning against supporting beam like branch. They are easy to make, you just need a couple of branches and you will have a great shelter. However, the odds are that they won't keep you safe from extremely hot or cold weather and even not from predators who can easily wreck it. 4. Bigger is not always better is rightly said, especially when it comes to survival. Don't burn your branches to make your fire bigger and your shelter weak. As if all your hard work is put into making a fire. It could be blown away within seconds by a rainstorm or heavy winds, so pay heed to your shelter first. 5. Fires in a cave look romantic just to the extent of movies. Yes, that right keeping fire inside a cave for your own comfort is not a good idea as the heat makes the rocks to expand, which break upon expanding. When the rocks break, they could kill the people inside or serve as a barricade and you will be yelling for help in a trapped cave so better keep the fire outside. Number 6. Wet matches could be really a pain in the head as they won't lit up until dried. Adventurers who have had to travel in the rain or who have to cross shallow rivers by walking through them must not have matches in their pockets or else they will have to suffer as the moisture in the match heads would be making it hard for lighting them up. A waterproof container would be a good option to carry along for wet conditions as they would keep your stuff protected from water, or you could carry waterproof matches along which would be of help. Number 7. Eating in a jungle is a mere concern, especially when you're out of stock. Eat whatever animals eat. Yes, when you are out on a food hunt, you must have the idea in mind that what's good for the birds and squirrels is definitely of no harm to us, but not every time, as the animals can eat mushrooms and other toxic things too that may harm the human body. Don't end up getting intoxicated, so don't always eat whatever animals eat. 8. They said eating raw meat and seafood on a journey is safe. No, it's not, and it's a bad idea. Want to find out why? Bite a raw fish yourself and enjoy all the pathogens and bacteria that come along, but not really. We've all seen the survival show with a charismatic host munching down some poor live animal. This may be safe once in a while but it's hardly a technique to mimic. Raw animal flesh can contain pathogens that may attack the human body, resulting in an extended onset condition that's difficult to diagnose. What about sushi, you say? Out there, there are many people who enjoy eating raw fish without falling ill. Some raw seafood that comes from salt water is safe for human consumption, but it's only because their pathogens aren't very compatible with the human body. The worms in sushi and the bacteria in oysters aren't usually the right species to take up residence in a human host. Play it safe, kill it, and cook it before you eat it. 9. 
Finding a dead animal along your way may be no less than a treasure, especially if you have been without food for long. However, leave it and walk your way. You can survive without eating for six weeks. It may be intolerable, but better prefer drinking water, building a safe shelter, and finding safe food rather than killing yourself in desperation. 10. Usually following a flying flock of birds may lead you to find water, but as humans cannot read a bird's mind, you may end up in an open field or you may find yourself among a friendly caravan of monkeys. Only try if you are good at understanding what the birds are up to. 11. Cactus fluid has many benefits. Yes, but from the many types of cactuses, there's only one type that's good for keeping you hydrated. Survivors need to carefully extract and drink from a cactus or you may end up feeling emetic. If you are not good at finding out a cactus, do not try out every cactus you come across. Find out another way to deal with your thirst. 12. Fancy drinking urine to stay hydrated? I wouldn't. But if it sounds appealing to your taste buds, go for it, as the pee-drinking legend Bear Grylls. Urine is a bodily waste and not recycled water, so it does not have a rehydration value. However, being a liquid, it does quench your thirst. 13. Drinking raw blood to survive may be a good option. Well, no. Gulping on animal blood could cause infectious diseases as you don't know what diseases do the animals carry with them. You won't be ready for dealing with health issues when lost in the woods. 14. Another strange myth is that of sucking on a stone to keep yourself hydrated. But that's not true, as when you suck on a stone, it draws moisture from other parts of your body, making you more thirsty than before. Would you be doing that in a desert? 15. Mostly, you may have seen moss growing on the north side of trees. The north side, without being troubled by the sunlight, possesses moisture to a greater extent, making it less conducive to growth. The angle of the sun at your given location, climate, and shade, caused by environmental aspects, can determine the growth of moss on trees. 16. You may have seen many scenes in movies where a person sucks of blood from a person bitten by a snake and saves their life. But that's all drama. In fact, when you put your mouth to the wound, it adds more spit to the wound and your mouth gets contaminated with poison. The best thing to do is to hold the area tightly so that the poison does not spread and to seek medical assistance quickly. 17. Drinking liquor does warm you up and there is nothing better than having a shot in the cold. But due to the alcohol, the surface of blood vessels dilate, making it more prone to the cold, and this causes a problem in the functioning of all body organs. The best thing to stay warm is coffee. 18. Frostbites can be irritating and make you handicapped. You feel the urge of getting rid of them as soon as you can, but rubbing the frosted skin is not a good idea as frostbites form when sharp ice crystals penetrate your skin and tissue and rubbing them is equivalent to rubbing sharp icicles into soft tissues. Instead, give the affected part a little heat and wait for it to get normal. 19. Hot tub relieves hypothermia is utterly wrong, as rubbing your frostbites won't get rid of them. Similarly, a hot tub just raises a person's body temperature and causes heart attacks. You can treat the sufferer by massaging him with warm towels or warm bottles. 20. Space blankets are of no use. You may have seen them in sci-fi movies, however, there were mylar-coated emergency blankets in some movies, which indeed are useful as they reflect the infrared energy and hence save you from the heat. You can stay safe by covering yourself in one of those. 21. Punching an attacking shark wouldn't be an idea. Moreover, not everyone has the expertise to hit it on its nose with accuracy and perfection both. The best thing to do would be to place a rock-solid object between yourself and the shark or try hitting its eyes and gills. 22. If you ever get caught in a rip current, swim parallel to the seashore. Mostly rip currents work at a specific angle, so in that case, you may be swimming parallel along getting ripped out. So it's better to swim along the shore and also towards it. 23. The idea of wearing cotton kilns as primary clothing in winters may not be cool enough as it may cause hypothermia. The fact behind is that when you sweat the cotton absorbs it and your body begins to turn cold instead of staying warm. This cold caused can cause hypothermia. 
24, GPS is your best friend accompanying you on your journey. It's a great navigational tool helping you with direction wherever and whenever you need. And it also tells you about your location. It is useful as navigation is not just about knowing where you are, but it is about knowing where to go as well. 25. Thumbnails could be good enough for you to test wood. You may have heard that if you can dent a piece of wood with your thumbnail, the wood is suitable for starting a friction fire. This myth just won't seem to go away, but it doesn't hold up. Some denser woods are fine for friction fires and are some softer woods don't work at all. When the thumbnail test works, it isn't an affirmation, it's a coincidence. 26. After the many problems that a patient of hypothermia goes through, such as trembling, having panic attacks, stammering, and awkward movements, the sufferer also starts getting drowsy and people usually allow these people to sleep. However, they must not be allowed to sleep as sleep in this condition may lead to death. Try keeping them awake until you warm them up. Having said that, we can conclude by saying that survival may be hard for everyone in resilient circumstances. However, Survival is not confined only to the fittest. With appropriate measures, you can save the day yourself, so don't fall for these misconceptions about surviving. Which of these sounded interesting to you? Have you ever been in a circumstance where you've had to show off your survival techniques? Do let us know in the comments section below. Thank you.